Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. My name is Caitlin and you have found Cross Stitch Kate's. This is my YouTube channel um, dedicated to my love of cross stitch and I'm back for another update today. Um, if you are new to my channel, uh, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. If you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for continuing to support me and um, it's really wonderful to be back. Um, if you are new to my channel, I'd be very curious to know how you found out about me. If somebody mentioned my channel on their FlossTube channel or if you found me on Instagram, um, I'm just curious. So uh, feel free to leave that in the comments if this is your first time joining me. <sighs> Let's see, today is August 19th. It's Saturday morning and I am just filming here. Um, I thought I'd better get something committed <laughs> to um to film here so this is my last weekend before i head back to work uh, i work as a school social worker at a public elementary school and workshop week is monday for teachers so um i have another week before students start but i've got a week of preparing which is great so it'll be fun to see everyone again and my very favorite part of the new school year is um hanging out in the kindergarten hallway <laughs> that first week of school and just watching everything start to fall into place. It is so fun with those little, those little five-year-olds. So I'm looking forward to a new school year, um, but I will, I will be sad not to have my, my free days anymore, but I had a great run. So <laughs> it's time to get back to some structure, get back to some routine. Um, and yeah, it'll be really good. Um, I did, I'm going to mention this here. I feel kind of weird mentioning it, but somebody did reach out to me and ask if I had an Amazon um, wish list for like my classroom and back to school, just asking if they could contribute, which was so, so nice. Um, so I just, I do have one. I thought I would mention it here. I will link it in the description box. If anyone has any inclination and wants to help um, me buy some, I have books, I have some social emotional regulation tools, um, different SEL games. Um, I would be very appreciative if anyone has the desire to um, to help and stock my classroom. Um, my job as a school social worker is basically my job is to address social emotional learning needs, um, whether that be through special education, whether that be because of um, a hard family issue that a student is having. Um, talking about challenging behavior, eliminating barriers to learning. Um, I do a lot of different things. So um, I'm always looking for like fun little fidgets or a great book on feelings. And so I do have some of those listed in my Amazon wish list. So if you are inclined to help, I would be very, very grateful. Um, and if not, I would encourage you to reach out. I'm sure that most of you know a teacher or have a school in your community that you think that um, could use a little bit of help. There's a lot of teachers kind of reaching out for resources um, at this time of the year. So if there's somebody in your life who's a teacher, consider helping them out and donating some books for the classroom or um, yeah, asking if they could use any, any support. So that's my little PSA for, for schools and for teachers. All right, what else have I been doing? Oh goodness. I have, since I last talked to you, um, I've really just been soaking up the summer. Um, I did go and visit my new baby nephew that was born last month. That was wonderful. He is such a peanut, so, so cute. Um, so I, I'll talk a little bit more um, in my plans about something that I'm going to stitch for him. Um, so I got to see him this week. I went and saw the Barbie movie, which was awesome. Had lunch with a friends. I got a pedicure um, and just have been kind of like trying to get things organized in my house. I need to like meal prep today and get back into my, my regular world's routine. So that's what I'm doing. But I think we should just jump on in. I have so much to show you. I If I waited much longer to film a video, I just knew it was going to be like an hour and a half long. So I don't know how long today's is gonna be, but I do have a lot um, to show you. I've been on an FFO 
kick this week. I have six things to show you that I have fully finished, which I cannot believe that's more than I've fully finished in like two years. So um, I have some of that. I've got new starts. I've got a finish. I've got all kinds of stuff to show you with plans. Um, so let's just get into it. Um, so I'll start off by showing you my book of days for August. So I did put some stickers on and I stitched most days this month. There may be one or two where I haven't. And of course we're only three weeks into the month. So yeah, I, I feel good about what I've done this month. Um, so yeah, I will continue to, I love, I love this. This is from the Needlework Press and they'll put out their 2024 um, book of days. I'm assuming it'll be on sale soon because um, we're getting towards the end of the year here, right? We're heading into the fall. Um, but this has been so, this is my first year using this and it is, I've written down every time I've stitched, I just write it down in here. I keep it right at my stitching spot and it is so very helpful, um, especially doing floss tube this year. Um, just being able to look back in the month, like I write down when I film so I can see like what projects I've worked on since my last film um, or since my last video. <laughs> that sounded weird. Um, and it's really fun to decorate with stickers. So that's my book of days. Okay, so let's start with the FFOs because like I said, I have a lot. All right, my first FFO is Things of Summer from Alicia Paulson, um, Posey Designs. This is upside down. Wow. Here's um, it right side up. So this is Things of Summer, and this is a series. I have done Things of Spring, and I'm currently, um, I have Things of Autumn in my whip pile. I finished this in December of 2021, and it is now August of 2023. I don't know what I've been doing with myself, but I have not been FFOing until now. So of course it's at the very tail end of the season, but I do have this hanging up um, where my things of spring was. It's been continuously in my house. I think it was up for a whole year, um, but this is just, it goes right by my doorway and um, it's so cute. Look at all the cute little motifs. Um, these are so quick to stitch up. I would encourage you to go to Posey Designs. Um, I'll link it below. But Alicia Paulson has some really, really cute um, cross stitch patterns. But I love a seasonal stitch. And my favorite thing about this is probably like the bathing suit or that peach up here is so cute. And just those flowers. Um, this is on, what is this on? 32 count sapphire linen. And it's just a beautiful, like minty green. And then I just got this frame. It's just a standard 10 by, or eight by 10 from Michaels. And I thought it was really pretty. I like this little texture right here. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I, um, all of my framed pieces, I pinned. So I used foam core board and then used sequin pins to pin it. Um, most of them are straight. I don't know. This one's kind of like, I don't know oblong and you know the spacing is weird in this so it's kind of hard to tell if I got it completely centered um but I love it oh I used um Liz has a video Elizabeth Ann can stitch has a uh pinning and framing tutorial video I think she has a couple but I'll link the one that I used um just as a reminder for what tools I needed and how to do it so haven't finished the back yet. I need to put some craft paper on um, and like a hook. I just have it kind of like sitting in the middle on a nail right now. But yeah, that is things of summer. All right, the next FFO I have is my butterflies piece. This does have glass on it. So I'm gonna try not to get the glare, but I'll move it up a little bit. So this is butterflies from, I want to say it's Create Charlotte. Nope, it's not. It's Dear Suki. Dear Suki has an Etsy shop and um, there are some really cute patterns from Dear Suki. Sorry about the glare. So I just put this in a shadow box frame. Um, 
I thought it kind of looked just like a specimen frame that like has butterflies on it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really happy with this. It's a little bit tight. Um, this pattern was exactly eight by 10. So um, especially this bottom wing is kind of just like tucked under. Um, but I still really like it. It can just, it's wider, so it can just kind of sit. Again, I need to finish the back, but I'm really happy with that. So colorful. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna give this to somebody or if I'm going to bring it out seasonally. I haven't really decided yet. My house is really small, so if I display too much cross-stitch, it just kind of looks like a cross-stitch museum. And sometimes that's not the vibe I'm going for, but um, <laughs> it's really pretty. I just used DMC. This is antique white. Um, I believe it's a 32 count linen. So that is butterflies. The next FFO I have is my swan, which I'm so, so happy with. Um, so yes, this, let me find the stats on this one. <clears throat> so this is swan. This is from Create Charlotte. That's right. Um, I'm not sure if Create Charlotte is still an Etsy shop, but I did get this on Etsy like three years ago, um, maybe two years ago. But this is on 32 count navy Belfast linen, and it is just framed in a beautiful circle frame. Okay, I'm going to show you my back. Please don't judge. <laughs> so this is a frame that is really cool because you just put a hoop in it, and then that's the frame. So I just put an eight inch hoop and there are like screws to tighten the hoop so that it stays put within like the little cavity. Um, and then you can hang it like from any of the, any of the little loops. I just kind of lean this against my mantle actually, usually it sits up here, um, but it, isn't it so cute? I will, this is from an Etsy shop. I will try to find um, what shop that is from because it really is kind of cool. I love just put it in a hoop and then and then go. So it was really easy to frame. I didn't have to like worry about centering it because I did that already when I put it in the hoop. So, um, so yeah, I need to put some felt on the back of this <laughs> to hide everything. I did put a piece of black felt um, against like the back of the stitching just because it's a dark fabric and I didn't want, you know, white, the white wall to show through. Um, and I actually, uh, finished this three times because I stitched this piece three times and I have delivered the other two to my two good friends. Um, this is representative of a really fun little friendship moment that we had together a couple years back where we saw three swans. Um, that is in my, I think it's my floss tube number two. It's about 45 minutes in if you want to hear the story about the swans, but I'm not going to retell it here today. But isn't it so cute? I really, really, really like this one. So that is Swan from Dear Charlotte. Or I'm sorry, Create Charlotte. And then my last framed piece is my favorite framed piece, I think, of the batch. Um, this is Bump in the Night from Prairie Schooler. And it turned out so adorable. <laughs> I am really loving this. So this, um, I finished this in September of 2021 and it's been sitting in the box for two years. Um, this is on 32 count lamb's wool linen and I just put it in an eight by 10 frame from Michael's. And I don't know if you can really see, but this frame is like a dark brown, just like the stitching. And it does kind of have like a coppery, um, there's just like little coppery grooves, I guess, that looks exactly like the copper thread. So I am so happy with this frame. I feel good about the actual framing job. I think it looks pretty straight. Um, and this is just one of the cutest Halloween patterns ever. I know a lot of people have stitched this or are wanting to stitch this or have it in their stash. And I would encourage you to stitch it if you have it. Like I said, it's from Prairie Schooler. You can stitch these into like little ornaments if you wanted, if you didn't want to do the whole sampler. I actually think I did swap out. They have two additional on the pattern 
you know, they do have a picture of it stitched on one piece, but then there's two extra ornaments on the back. And so I think I did switch out something um, with one of the extra ornaments, but it's so, so cute. I love the haunted house. And my other favorite is probably the skeleton. It's just adorable. So there, now I have something for Halloween, finally. And I'm so happy to have this not under my bed anymore in a box. All right, so that was the last of the framed FFOs, but then I did two pillows yesterday. So I'm really excited about this. Um, my first finish is of Eight Birds by Kathy Barrick. This is the cutest little small reproduction sampler. I feel like this came out maybe a couple of years ago. I stitched this last summer, just like in a weekend. It looks like I finished this in um, June of 2022. And I just pulled my own colors, so it's a little bit different from the original. And it's on a piece of mystery, like orna an ornament cut from Color and Cotton, but it almost looks like a terracotta, kind of like clay color. So pretty. And so I got my sewing machine out for the first time since winter and I made a little pillow. It's pretty flat, <laughs> I would say. My um, stitching of the like opening where I stuff it is just horrendous. So I absolutely had to add some pom-pom trim. Um, and I love it. I have some crushed velveteen on the back from Lady.Creates. Can't remember the color, but it's beautiful. It's like a wine color. And the pom-pom trim is also from Lady.Creates and it is in the color Chianti. Um, so to finish this pillow, I did, I watched a tutorial from Helen D, just her basic small pillow tutorial. And that was super helpful. I, I've done a couple of pillow finishes before, but I just needed a refresher. So I did that. And then I watched um, Stephanie from Lindy Stitches has an awesome tutorial about how to apply the pom-pom trim and like hand sew it on, because I did hand sew it. And it's so easy and her video just makes it so clear and simple. So I will link both Helen's and Stephanie's videos um, in the description box because I am not, I, I really hate FFOing things. Like I would rather be stitching. I don't enjoy it. Um, but I just got to the point where I'm like, I'm stitching so much. I need to finish some of these things. So it took a couple hours and I did it and it's a really cute finished product. So that's eight birds. And then the next one um, is flower box from Thistles. And this is actually, um, I started I started this for a 12 by 12 in 2021, um, but I had like, I'll put where I was when I started this again, because I started this at the end of July, or I started working on it again at the end of July from being at this point. And look where it is, I finished it. I, it took me like four days of stitching to finish this. It's just a cute small, um, I mean, it's not like super small, but it's, I think it's a perfect little pillow size for a larger small pillow. Um, but this is on 32 count ancient from picture this plus, I believe. Yes, it is. I love this linen. <laughs> it's so pretty. There's like, I don't know if you can see, but there's like, um, some blue in it and then just like tan and white. It's really, really pretty. Um, and then I stitched this with the called for flosses. Like I said, it's from Thistles and it's adorable. I used the same velveteen on the back and I didn't put any trim on it. I don't know if I'm going to, I kind of like it just how it is cause it's such an ornate design. Um, so yeah, so these are my sweet little, I feel like these are just nice little summer pillow finishes. Again, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with them, but put them in a bowl, I guess, like, like people do. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. So those are my six slash eight with the two extra swans um, FFOs, yay.
One thing I did want to ask people about, if you have any advice for me, as I was FFOing all of those pieces, you know, obviously I had to like iron them and press them, but how do people get hoop lines out of linen? I seriously just could not. I was trying so hard. I was like stretching it. I did some misting with some like a spray bottle of water just on the back to like try to get these creases out and it was a nightmare. So I think that like with most of my um like pinning and like kind of stretching I feel like you can't really see some of the creases but if anyone has any like hard and fast tips for just how you get especially hoop marks. Like I know fold marks also were kind of hard, but the hoop marks are really what um, are what got me. I have been using um, a Nerge hoop and those create the worst marks. I much prefer Q-snaps for like not leaving those creases. Anyway, if you have any hot tips, leave them down below. I would be very interested to know if anyone has like something that works very, very well. So. Okay, I have one finish. Um, I started this in my last video for Jolly July or Christmas in July, and that was Merry Christmas from Blackbird Designs. Such a cute little small sampler. Um, and so I started, let's see, I started this on um, the 23rd of July and I finished it on the 31st of July. So I really just kind of powered through with this one. Um, it was a fast stitch. It's very small and it's very adorable. So, sorry, I did not iron this one, but here is my little sampler. So this, it says Merry Christmas right there in the middle, so you can see. And I love, love, love the colors. I did um, use a color and cotton conversion and really, I just matched, I just tried to match the colors. Um, I went through my stash and just tried to match colors like on the cover. And that is what I came up with. Look how cute it is. It's so tiny. This is um, 40 count, no, it's 32 count um, color in cotton. It's a limited edition color, so I don't have an actual color name and you probably can't get it anymore. Um, but it's kind of like a gingerbread color. I was saying, um, I was talking to a few people on Instagram and I was just saying this definitely reminds me of like a gingerbread cookie or a gingerbread house or something with like the vibrant candy colors and the gingerbread background. So, so cute. I did um, highlight my initials CM in the top. I just used a darker green. And then in the picture, there are another set of initials on either side. I don't know if you can see that. They're really light pink. Um, but I changed it because I already had my initials up there and I made two little flowers on either side of that vase. This is the back. What am I doing? You guys, I've been showing you the back this whole time. What is wrong with me? I thought it looks kind of like hard to see. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I'm gonna leave that in there because it's kind of funny. I'm a dunce. All right, here's like my, <laughs> okay, I'm, I bet people were yelling at the, the screen this whole time. Here's my finish of the right side, not of the back. Okay, so like I was saying, there are two flowers on either side of that vase that used to be initials, and then the C and the M are my initials. So, and it says Merry Christmas right there in the middle, and it is gorgeous. I'm so happy with how this turned out. So, I don't know how I'm going to finish this one. Probably another frame, but wow, I'm so embarrassed that I was showing you guys the back that whole time. There it is. Merry Christmas from Blackbird Designs. I would highly recommend if you need a quick um, Blackbird stitch. This one's fun. All right, and now let's move on to my new starts. I had three new starts since I last saw you. I've just been in a new start kind of mood. I have so many whips and my whip list just keeps growing and growing, but let's add a few more. Why not? I'm going to start a bunch of things in September too. So it's just a party this year. I don't know. Um, but this is what I started, um, let's see, when did I start this? On August 13th. I spent one day working on this and this is Halloween at Hollyberry Farm. 
from Stacy Nash Primitives. I've seen so many people that have finished this or that are working on this currently and this will be fun to work on this season. I'll try to get a little closer. This picture isn't the best. Um, so I had quite the time coming up with colors for this <laughs> because I did, um, I did get the call for colors. And it just wasn't what I received. It did not look entirely like the picture. So in the picture, just those flat, the border, I'm going to um, focus on the border. Um, it looks like black flowers and like a pretty vibrant white, like vine or leaf, right? Um, as well as the house. And the colors that were sent were um, parchment for the white and carriage black for the black from um, Gentle Arts, I believe. And I just was not, no, yeah, Gentle Arts. This is the, the brown or the black. And it looks really brown to me. I don't know, it's more gray, I guess. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of brown in it and I wasn't feeling it. So I decided that I was actually going to use like a dark, navy black for those black flowers. So I'm using Fathom from Weeks. Maybe you can see it. So I'm using Fathom and then instead of the parchment, which would just looks really like brown or yellow, um, I'm using chalk from Gentle Arts. So this is going to be my border colors. So it's pretty vibrant white and this dark navy black. So I'm doing this on cobblestone, a 40 count cobblestone from Color and Cotton. And it's this really beautiful, like kind of grungy gray. And I'll show you my little baby start. I just did one of the flower borders. And I'm so happy with how that is looking. So this is like the smallest start ever, but that's all right. Um, these are pretty fiddly and they take a long time to do. <laughs> so, you know, the whole border is, it's large and in charge. This is a huge pattern. This is 343 by 227. So this is gonna take me a while, but I thought, why not start it? I've had it kitted for a very long time and I finally found colors that I like. So, and look how, I just think the color of the fabric is really nice and kind of matches with what I have going on here. So there's my start on Halloween at Hollyberry Farm. And I couldn't just start one Stacy Nash um, because I had the another one kitted and thought, let's start them both. They're both huge. Um, this one's a tiny bit smaller. I mean, actually it's kind of significantly smaller. It's 285 by 197, but this is Christmas at Hollyberry Farm from Stacy Nash Primitives. And I'm, I just think this is gorgeous as well. Um, I'm using some of the called for colors and some I have converted. So um, I will show you my fabric. I'm doing another 40 count. I'm doing Fox Run from Color and Cotton. And it's this really pretty like brown gray color. I love it. And I'll just show you my starts. I did a middle start for this because too many border starts bum me out. And so I did a middle start of the vase. Oh my gosh, I'm bad at showing things. There's a flower, a vase with some flowers, and then a part of the fence. And then that bottom portion is that vine from one of the border flowers. I'm gonna compare. So I'm starting with this vase right in the middle and then I took it down. So, and I'm happy with, um, again, I, I really do like the cover photo. So I'm pretty happy with the color that I'm, ch that I chose. Um, so I think the colors that I subbed out are the reds and the greens. So the called for, I feel like was, piney woods for the greens and it just was so brown. I wasn't feeling it. So I changed it to English Ivy 
English Ivy from Classic Color Works. And then for the red, I changed the red from Mulberry to Old Red Paints. And the red is just, there's just pops of red, like the cream or the holly berries on the outside and then the woman's dress. So it's really not in it very much, but I thought this was a nice pop. And here's the rest of my colors. It's just a very classic um, palette with greens and golds and like this cream color for the house. Look at that house, it's so pretty. So yeah, I, I'm i so excited to continue to work on this. So hopefully I'll get some, some uh, progress on that this year. All right, my last new start that I have, number three, that I have to show you is um, the Hope Sampler from Stitches Through the Years. Here is a photo of it. I'm gonna move over a little bit. Photo of it here. Um, I came, I've never seen this pattern before, ever. And I don't know where I have been hiding. I don't know if a lot of people know about this pattern or if people have been working on this or finished it. Um, if this came out before I started stitching, but I came upon this on Etsy. Um, I was looking for birth samplers for my nephew and this is not a birth sampler, but it randomly like showed up in, as I was scrolling through a lot of different birth samplers and I like stopped. I was like, oh my God, this is gorgeous. Um, not for my nephew, for me. <laughs> and it has an Emily Dickinson quote um, that is very well known. Um, the hope is, a, is the thing with feathers. Um, you can read the verse, but it is gorgeous. And I just, the color palette spoke to me instantly, like the purples and the mauves and the grays and the browns. I thought it was just so earthy and beautiful. Um, so I gave that a start. Sorry, let me just see. I started this on um, Thursday, so on the 17th. It's my last new start before the school year, last new start of summer. Um, so I am just stitching this on, um, it is a fabric, fabric flare fabric. It's a 36 count ivory. So it's really, it's just white basically. And there's no modeling on it, um, which I was really okay with because I just think this is such a beautiful, like in classic sampler. So let's just do something on, on ivory. And I just have a small start. I'm actually happy with my start. I, I did a middle start for this one too. I didn't want to start with the border. Um, I will move down to the border. I'm gonna start at the bottom for the border. But I just did a middle start um, of a really pretty flower motif and then started the, the urn. And then below the urn will be the bottom border. So yeah. Um, so like I said, 36 count fabric flare ivory. And then my color palette, I'm doing everything as called for. And it's just, it's perfect. It's like all these dusty colors. I don't know. I just, I'm very drawn to it. And I think it's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So I'm really happy with my little start on that. Yay. Um, what else was I going to say about this? I don't think anything. Um, oh, this is not linen. This is Lugana, by the way. So fabric flare Lugana. Oh, this pattern does have beads. So I did get the Mill Hill Petite beads in the color. I think it's like a silver. So I've never done beads before. I have some projects that will require beads, but I've never actually did have done them before. So yeah, that'll be a challenge. That'll be fun. All right, let's move on to my whips. The first whip that I, oh, so my, uh, the way I chose my whips this month or this time frame since I last saw you was I wanted to get a little bit of progress on some of the pieces that um, had like the smallest start ever. So I have many whips that just have like a day or two of stitching. So I wanted to focus on a couple of those and just get a little bit more progress. So thistles, um, the flower box one that I that I finished was one of them. Um, so that was my first um, kind of small start whip. And I'm, so I'm gonna put where I was when I actually 
um, started working on it this month. So this next one that I, that I um, worked on was Bloomers from Ink Circles, which is so beautiful. Um, I did have a little bit of trouble though with the color palette. So let me show you where I was at. Here's a photo of where I started and I worked on this for five days, I think. Five days. I'm doing this on 32 count Sprite Lugana. And so that's where I was and here is where I got to. So I'm really happy with my progress on this. Oh, I love the fabric. This fabric is like a pinky lavender. And then I changed up the colors a little bit. So I kept all the purples. Um, you can kind of see there's like, so it's like pinks and purples. And then there's two browns um, that take up actually quite a bit of the pattern. And the DMC, so this is charted in DMC. And when I pulled those DMCs, they're just, they were so brown. And I was like, I don't want this much dark brown um, in my project. So I did some color swapping and I decided I was to make one of the browns this like more vibrant green. <laughs> so this is actually gonna be kind of colorful. Um, I don't know if it's quite working. <laughs> you guys can tell me if you think the colors go together. I don't know. That green might be a little too vibrant and out of place, but I don't know. I think it looks okay with the purples and then the pinks. And then I did keep one brown and I just kind of lightened it up. So it's more of like a coppery brown. So we'll see, but I kind of have that inside. Um, I have the inside right here. So now I have to do this kind of like loopy outline and then do all of the four quadrants. Um, some people have been talking about like how they love ink circles so much, but it's hard to stitch because you have to do the same thing four times. And I, I can relate to that. The middle is easier for me. And then once you start getting to like the big um, parts, of the, the quadrants, it does get very repetitive. So I don't know when I'm gonna pull this out again, but I feel really good about the progress that I did make on that. So that is Bloomers from Ink Circles. And then my next project that I worked on is a tono or a tonio from Satsuma Street. This is part of a seasonal series and it is very beautiful. I love, love the colors. So this is charted in all DMC and some of the DMCs are um, with the variegated DMC collection which are actually very beautiful. And so I have done the summer, I finished the summer and I have the spring and winter all kitted up and ready to go. Um, but I, I think this might be my favorite one just because who doesn't love fall? These do call for quite a few colors. This is my pre floss drop days. So they're all in floss away bags. So I can't really give you a good view of the palette, but let me show you what I have. Um, this is on a 32 count. I believe it's called Harvest Moon. Let me go back. This is an older one. I started this for a 12 by 12 in 2021. Um, but yeah, it's on Harvest Moon Lugana. And it's a beautiful um, kind of gold. And so, oh, here's where I was before when I picked this up. I think I had worked on it for, I don't know, like three or four days. And now I have the whole leaf done and I've got the pumpkin done and a little bit of the outline. So that is exciting. So there's two blocks and I'm gonna pull this back out in the fall cause I really, really enjoy working on it and it goes very fast. Um, and all of the little motifs are just adorable. My favorites have gotta be this beautiful wine colored flower. And I also really, really like the apple, um, like the slice of an apple, so cute. So I will get back to that, but here is my Antonio. 
All right, and my last whip that I worked on, I had the most pitiful start on this ever, um, is Consider the Lilies, which is one of the biggest patterns ever. 435 by 363 is huge from Heartstring Samplery. Many, many people have worked on this, have finished it, have it in their whip pile. It's probably coming out for Sampler September soon for a lot of people. Um, it's just gorgeous. The colors in this are stunning. So here is a picture of my very pitiful start. I also started this on 12-31-21 for a 12 by 12. Those are pesky. Those, uh, those projects that I started back in the day. <laughs> I did the 12 new starts that year. Um, so I am stitching this. So I got a little bit of progress, not tons. I worked on this for two days and I am stitching this on 40 count ballet slipper from Fox and Rabbit using all the call for colors. Here are, there's so many colors and they're all just beautiful. Um, I think it's a mix of weeks, dental arts, and classic color works. It's stunning. And here's my fabric. So this is that ballet slipper. I was almost going to show you the back of a pattern. And I'm doing this on a, a full half yard, so you can't even see that. But I just have a little corner done. So here is where I got to. So I finished... So I think I just had part of a flower done and a little bit of a vine um, for my start. So I finished two of the flowers and a little bird motif. How adorable is that? And then here's my adorable needle minder. I love it. It's wooden. I think I got it from Top Knot Stitcher. But there it is. I love it. I'm for sure going to bring this out in Sampler September. I would love to get to just slowly but surely like continue to make progress on this. Um, I just saw Cam from Cam or Cameron from Cam Stitcher just put out a video this week and she, I believe that she's using this start for her back to school sale hosted by Lauren, the New Hampshire Stitcher or Big Ass Project sale. Um, and this is a big ass project. So um, she was saying, I don't know why I'm showing you the floss. I was going to show you the pattern. <laughs> she um, was funny because she was just talking about how she's going to change it and make it her own. And I had all those exact same thoughts. Um, I am not religious at all. So I am going to just change a few of the things in the pattern to just make it so that I will enjoy hanging it on my wall. So I am going to change the first... Um, I'm going to put some song lyrics in. Have not decided what lyrics. I'm also going to take out Adam and Eve. And I'm probably going to do like another floral motif. And I think I'm going to take the angels out. Because these angels kind of... I don't love them. <laughs> I love everything else about this pattern though. Um, so I'm just going to make it my own. That's what we do in cross stitch, right? We just... We stitch things and they're beautiful how they are and they're also beautiful when you when you change things and make it so that you will actually want to hang it in your house or give it as a gift or whatever you want to do with your cross stitch. So I'm excited for that. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about plans. I won't take too much more time, I promise. Um, so for the rest of August, I have two things that I really want to focus on. I need to do my August room in Dollhouse from Bright Needle. I have a goal of stitching one room a month all year long. Um, I started in January and I'm going to end in December and I am up to date so far, except I need to do August. So I'm going to do my one room for um, my dollhouse. Second, I'm going to finish my um, uh, seasonal solstice sal, um, my little salt box house that Lauren, the New Hampshire stitcher, um, and Jessica Sweetwater stitcher and I started back in spring. Um, I just have an outline of my summer house. So I'm gonna finish that so that I am prepared for when fall rolls around. I need to start my fall house. Um, so those are the two things that I just, I'm, those are the only two things that I'm going to focus on for the rest of the month. Um, there's only 10 more days left and I'm going to be busy with work. So I think that is a very attainable goal. And then 
September 1st, the back to school start, um, or Sal is gonna start. And I am so excited. I'm sure everyone has heard about it. Like I said, uh, Lauren, the New Hampshire Stitcher, my good friend is hosting that. And the point is just to start something huge and have fun kidding it up with like all the new fabrics and flosses that you choose. So I have not fully committed to a project yet. I have a lot of things in mind. I have one kitted up that I showed you a couple of months ago that I was going to start and then I never did. And that is Sophia Barnshire from Northumberland Samplery. I'll put a picture here and correct myself if I am wrong about any of that. So I have this all kitted up, ready to go. I think it's beautiful and it's huge. So that would absolutely qualify for a back to school uh, project. But then I was looking through my sampler stash and I have a few hands across the sea samplers um, that are really beautiful that I've been wanting to start for a long time. I've never done a hands across the sea before. And so I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna just be good and not buy any more supplies and just you know use what I have or if I'm gonna kit one of these up. And I need to make a decision soon so I can order everything. Um, so the two Hands Across the Sea samplers that I am considering, you know what, you love it. Elizabeth Weston, and it's the pinks for me. The pink fabric, the pink flosses. It's so beautiful. So I really, this has been in my stash for a while and I love it. So this is an option. And then another Hands Across the Sea that I have in my stash that I've had for a couple of years is Mary Ann Diaper from 1826. And it is also gorgeous and has some pretty awesome pinks. I like the verse and it's just really pretty. <laughs> they're actually, they're pretty similar. They're, I don't know. I'm not versed in samplers, but you know, the floral border, the verse, the flowers, the trees. I don't know. They're so pretty though. I love both of them. Okay. Um, does anyone have an opinion? Mary, Elizabeth, or Sophia? Here's Sophia again. Which one should I start? Comment below. What do you think? Mary, Elizabeth, Sophia, help me make a decision because I'm struggling. I believe that Sophia is the biggest, followed by Elizabeth, followed by Mary. So, oh, so many decisions. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I will make a decision by September 1st because I'm not going to miss that sale. Um, my other plan, I have two more plans for September. Um, I was talking, well, I was watching Lindsay from, oh, is it Cat Fur and Cross Stitch? I think it is. I think that's her channel name, but Lindsay is awesome. I, if you haven't checked out her channel yet, go and check her out. I will link her channel down below. Um, and then I was talking with Bridgen, um, and watching her floss tube and her kit parade. And both of them either just got this in the mail or had this kitted. And I've had this for a while. And this is the pink sparrow sampler from, um, it's from with that needle and thread, I believe, right? Yeah. And it's beautiful and so pretty. And so I have been wanting to start this for a very long time. And then I watched both Lindsay and Bridget's videos within like a week of each other. And they both were talking about how they wanted to start this. So I reached out to them via Instagram and they were both game for starting this in September. So it's another little sampler September start. Um, I believe that we are starting this on September 9th and um, we were checking out hashtags and there is already a, a pink sparrow sal. Um, so if you know who started that, I think maybe a couple of years ago that was started. Um, can you let me know? Otherwise we're just gonna tag on to, um, to that same hashtag. So if you have this and you wanna start it with us on September 9th, 
you absolutely should do that. I also, I have fabric for this, but not floss. So I need to grab those. And then my last um, sampler is that I'm going to start in September is a birth sampler for my new baby nephew that was just born in July. Um, I am not going to share his name just for privacy reasons for my brother and sister-in-law. Um, but I am going to show you, and I don't think they watch my channel, so hopefully, I mean, if, if you guys do, I'm stitching a sampler for, for the baby. Um, but this is, what is this even called? It's the Moon Bell Pole from Tiny Modernist. Here is a photo of this. Um, so my brother and sister-in-law are very in tune with the natural world. That's what I will say. They're amazing people. Um, they both have an affinity for the moon. They love the moon. They love pine trees. They've got uh, pine tree tattoos. And I just thought that this pattern would be perfect. Um, so I'm going to, it's not a birth sampler, obviously, but I'm going to make it into one. So it's nice and long and it's got that full moon right in the middle. So I'm going to put his uh, name. I'm going to chart it in the full moon and then I will put his birthday in one of the moon phases and his, I think I'm going to do weight, birth weight in another one of the little moons. So I think that's going to be so cute. Um, I do have a couple of options. So I just got, um, it, the, the call for fabric is blackboard um, linen, 32 count blackboard linen. I got blackboard Ada because I was wondering, because I don't like stitching on like super dark fabric. Um, it only has four colors. It's got black, white, and two grays. And so I could, I'm gonna get rid of that green. I could stitch it on this, and I think that would look actually really nice. And then maybe do a white frame so it's not like so dark. But I think that would work. But then I was looking at Top Knot Stitcher's website and I came across this like star fabric, and this is a 32 count, and it's really cool. And it has stars on it. And I thought this would also be a really cool way to do it. I don't know if the grays are gonna blend in too much though. I don't know. I'm gonna decide. Maybe I'll have to do a little test strip on this cause this would be very cool. So I'm gonna start that for my little baby nephew. Um, my goal is going to be to have this done by Christmas. That might be a lofty goal, but I'm gonna give it a go. So yeah. So those, okay. So yeah, lots of plans. I always have lots of plans, but I'm pretty certain that that is um, what I'm gonna do in September. So, uh, what else do I have for you? I do have some haul. Do you wanna see all my haul? I won't show you all of it. Um, I don't have a ton, but I do have quite a few, um, I have quite a few pieces of fabric that I've gotten in the last month. Um, but I'm going to start with the charts that I've gotten. So Abby over at Top Knot Stitcher was having like a $5 Friday about a month ago where a bunch of her smaller charts, um, she listed for $5, which was really awesome. So I took advantage and I got four little um, smalls because I don't have tons of smalls. Mm -hmm. But I have a happy skeleton from Rami's Creations, who I've never heard of actually. But it's this little cute skeleton guy that they turn into pillows. So that would be fun for Halloween. Just tiny. Um, so it looks like there's, um, this is stitched on like a white linen, but then there's a lot of blue that makes it kind of like full coverage. I would just stitch it on a blue because <laughs> that would not be tons of stitching. But yeah, I stitched it on the blue fabric. So there is that. I also got Edna Goes to Brunch, which I have been, it's been in my cart forever since it came out. This is from Lindy Stitches and it's so cute. Edna just munching on some fruit there. Very, very cute. So I got that one. And then I got from Thistles, I got Mrs. Claus's Kitchen, which is adorable for Christmas. 
This one's not super tiny, but it's not huge. It's 117 by 106. And then I'm from Forbidden Fiber Co. I got Love is in the Air, which is a cute little Valentine's stitch. I really like that. Yeah. Um, let's see. So then I, I think I just have fabric. And then one non-stitchy thing to show you. So I was a member of um, the Be Stitch Me Fabric of the Month Club. And I did that all summer long and I decided I was going to cancel that membership. I just, I have three or I had three um, fabric clubs going on and I canceled two of them because I just don't need, I don't need that much fabric. I have such a great stash. Um, but this month it was lightly salted, not roasted from Brandy at Be Stitch Me. I got, I get the 40 count and it's beautiful. It's kind of like a creamsicle color, kind of corally brownish. Love that. So I got that and then I was perusing her website as I was canceling my club. I was perusing her website and I decided to get some, just a few cuts. Okay, so the three um, cuts that I got from the Stitch Me's shop was I got 40 count hot cocoa. It's a really pretty mottled brown grayish color. Love that. Then I got a 40 count Portabella, which is really, really cool. It kind of reminds me of Murky. It's very mottled. Wow, look at that. I have no idea what I'm gonna put on this. It's really, really pretty though. And then I randomly got some Ada. I got some 20 count Ada in the color um, Cold Foam. Love that. Look how pretty. I haven't stitched on Ada in a long time, so I had kind of a desire to do that. I don't know what I'm gonna use that for, but it's nice to have for stash. So that was all my Be Stitch Me fabric, which is so beautiful. I would highly recommend it to anyone. Um, and then I got my, I think I had already, I canceled my Color and Cotton Fabric of the Month and Floss of the Month Club. I just needed a break. I have so much. Um, so I didn't get that this month um, and I won't be getting that, which it makes me sad, but because I do love getting something in the mail every month without ordering, but I have enough. <laughs> and then I'm a part of the Fox and Rabbit um, Fabric of the Month Club. And this is the one I'm gonna keep for a few more months probably. And I do the 40 count and I got Hogs Bristle from Fox and Rabbit. So it's really just a great neutral. And then the last piece of linen I got, I decided I wanted to try, um, uh, is it Trixie Tricycle, Cedar River Linens? Is it Jody? Oh, I'm, I'm, if I mess that up, I apologize. But I decided to try Cedar River and I just got this beautiful white. It's like a mottled white. Um, and it's called, I had a hard time saying this, Albarium. I don't know what that means. I think it's like a stone maybe, but I got 40 count Albarium. And it's really just kind of a bright white with a little bit of modeling. And it's perfect for like a sampler. So I'm excited to have that in my stash. Um, oh, I did get a needle, a needle minder from Top Knot that came with all my little projects. Um, it says I cross stitch because it makes me happy. She has great needle liners on her site. And then my last bit of haul is non-stitchy related, but I think that you will appreciate it. Um, so I follow Paper Minty Studios on Instagram. They're like a paper goods um, and sticker company. And um, she does a monthly release of stickers and like scrapbooking type journaling um, paper goods. And she's very popular. They sell out very quickly, but I randomly snagged. And I've never bought from her before, but I've been an admirer for a long time. Um, so she just has these gorgeous, like look at these stickers. They're just like girlies hanging out in nature. 
Um, and there's so many of them and they're all gorgeous. And I thought these would be good for like my, um, my book of days or if I'm like writing a note to somebody, put some of these gorgeous stickers on. So I got like a sticker pack. Um, here's some more. There, and they, they, this all came in a pack. I think it was $40 for all of these like original, every sheet is different stickers. So I'm just, I'm excited about these. Go check out um, Paper Minty Studios. Follow her on Instagram. She always shows what she's working on for the next month. Here's just another little, it's like a backpack, flowers. Um, yeah, this month um, the release was called Field Notes. So here's the inspiration. It's just gorgeous. So I'm happy with that. That's exciting. So that's all of my haul. Let me talk about a few new floss tubers that I have been um, watching. I think there were two, uh, two new floss tubers this month that I found that have just stood out for me. Um, the first one is Elizabeth with Savory Stitches. No, Savory Sewing. Um, I will link her channel down below. She's awesome. I think she has two or three videos out right now. She did a whip parade, so you can really see her stitchy style. Um, but she's really, um, she's a natural floss tuber. She's fun to watch. Um, she has really fun projects. So go ahead and check out um, Elizabeth. Um, she lives in Oregon and she's, like I said, has a great variety. Um, and then I've also been watching Katie um, from So Tattered. Katie, I think has four videos out. She just has a new one that I haven't watched yet, but she does really gorgeous um, samplers. She's a quilter as well. She always has a quilt in her backgrounds and she's a natural floss tuber. I think her channel has kind of already blown up. Um, so many of you probably already know Katie, um, but if you haven't, go check her out. She is very fun to watch. So those are my two um, new floss tubers. And then I've talked, I've talked about a few of my stitchy friends, but I did want to give a special shout out to Cameron from Cam the Stitcher. Um, she just released a new video, I think yesterday or the day before, and she just said some very sweet things about my channel. And Cam, right back at ya, I feel the same way. Whenever your videos come out, I that's it's like top of the list. So you're a gem. So thank you so much for the shout out. Right back to ya. Um, but yeah, I've been watching a lot of floss tube this summer, a lot. So I, I have many people that I could sit here and list. Um, this community, like I've said before, is so fun and very supportive of one another. So if anyone has shouted me out and I haven't responded or something, please let me know. Like I may have missed you. Um, if you have a new or if you have a, a channel, a floss tube channel that you want me to check out, or like you know of somebody that has a new channel, please let me know. I'm always looking for new people to watch. Um, I had a lot of fun. I participated in the Common Threaded Stitcher weekends that happened last week on Instagram. And I found a few new um, people, you know, accounts on Instagram to follow. And it's just so fun. This community is huge. I feel like it's growing all the time. There's always new people putting out videos and content. Um, so it's fun to see that. And I also want to just say thank you to everyone who continues to come back and watch me because like I said, there's a lot of content out there and you do not have to spend time with me. And if you do, I really, really appreciate it. All right, everyone. I think I'm going to end this video. I had a few things that were on my um, watch list and my things I've read, but I think I'm just going to end it here and maybe incorporate some of those next time because this video is already fairly long and you're probably ready to get on to the next, the next floss tuber. Um, so once again, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me for a little bit and see what I've been up to. I so appreciate it. If you haven't already and you feel inclined, please hit that subscribe button. Um, I don't do it for the numbers, but like, it's really fun. <laughs> it's really, really fun when I see that people have joined me and, um, like are interested in what I have to say. So it's, just 
this is a fun process. And yeah, if you just want to know when my videos come out and you want me to be in your uh, subscriber list, hit subscribe. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you've been stitching. If you have any tips about ironing, <laughs> let me know. Um, and if you have a floss tube channel or somebody that I, you think I should be watching that I have never mentioned before, please leave that down below as well. So with that, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself and I will see you shortly. Bye.